As you can see from the title of this video, this tutorial is related to solving problems that are about molarity and molality. The accompanying overheads that go with this should be titled Concentrations of Solutions because molarity and molality are two of the three ways that we quantitatively, meaning with numbers, can measure the strength of a solution. How much of a solution that we're looking at is made up of solute, how much is made up of solvent. So we'll start with molarity. And if I look at the definition, right, it says that concentration is the measure of the amount of a solute in a given amount of a solvent. Right, the greater the number of molecules in the solution, the higher the concentration. Molarity has a specific equation. Molarity is equal to moles of the solute divided by liters of the solution. So if we can get ourselves these two pieces of information, we would be good to go. If we're given the molarity, big M, we must express it in moles over liters, and we can use it to do brackets. The first example says, what is the concentration of a solution if 90 grams of NaCl, 90.0, is dissolved in 3.50 liters of water? If I'm going to solve this type of problem, what I want to do right, is identify what the question is asking. What is the concentration means what is the molarity? Molarity is always expressed in terms of the solute. So when it says, what is the molarity? I'm looking for, question mark, big M of NaCl. Then I list what I'm given. The two things it gives me is I have 90.0 grams NaCl, and I have 3.50 liters of the solution. If I'm going to get big M of NaCl, I'm going to have to identify my solute and my solvent. In this case, I have 90 grams of salt and 3.50 liters of water. Water is known as the universal solvent, which means that the NaCl must be my solute. So I can get more specific with my equation. I want to find moles of NaCl per liter of solution. Now, one thing I want you to understand as we go through is the 3.50 liters is technically of water. But when I put 90 grams of NaCl salt into the 3.50 liters, that is not going to change what the volume of the solution is because the salt will dissolve. And so even though it's listed as the liters of water, the 3.50 liters is really of the entire solution. Which means what I'm trying to find is the moles of NaCl. Well, I'm given grams of NaCl. We do conversions like this all the time. If I want to convert from grams to moles, I put grams and ACL on the bottom. I put moles and ACL on the top. Anytime we're grams to moles, one always goes with moles. And then we go to the periodic table and take 1NA plus 1CL to get the mass for NACL. So off the table, NA is 22.99. CL is 35.45, which gets us a value of 58.44 grams of NaCl. Then we do the math on this. I take my 90.0 divided by 58.44. I get a number of 1.5400. I get 
three sig figs here and four here, which means I get three in my answer. So I can express this as 1.54 mole NaCl. Now I have the moles of what I wanted, so I can plug it in. 1.54 mole NaCl. I do one last division to get my answer. And with three sig figs, I would say my molarity of NaCl is 0 0.440 big M. Right? And remember, big M will always hide moles per liter. The second example says, how many moles of HCl are required to create a 0 0.80 liters of a 0 0.500 molar solution. And so as we look at this problem, again, you want to identify if it's a molarity problem. In this problem, the big M that is on 0 0.500 molar next to the word solution tells me that this is a molarity problem. So once again, I'll list what I know and list what I'm trying to find. I know I've got 0 0.80 liters of a 0 0.500 big M solution. And because I'm asked for HCl, the big M must be of HCl. My question says, how many moles of HCl am I looking for? Like, there's two different ways we can do this problem. Method number one, you jump straight to the molarity equation, which says big M of HCl will be equal to moles HCl per liter of solution. From there you plug in and you solve for what you're looking for. I was given the molarity, so I would say 0 0.500 big M is equal to moles of HCl is what I'm looking for, we'll call it X. Liters of solution was 0 0.80. This is a math class problem now, so to solve for X I multiply both sides times 0.8. And when I do that, I'll get 0 0.80 liters times 0 0.500 big F. The reason I'm not the biggest fan of this style of solving is it becomes something you have to memorize to see how your units go. You have to remember that big M is moles over liters, right? and then that liters would cancel so that you would get half of 0.8, which is 0 0.40, and that would be your moles of HCl. The second method involves doing bracket problems, which is something we are much more accustomed to doing. And the thing that I would want you to remember and take home is this. Anytime you have a volume and a molarity, you are able to get yourself to the moles of a substance. Here is how. If I start with my volume, And in a bracket problem, I wanted to convert into moles. I would put liters on the bottom and moles on the top. To plug numbers in there, I would have to know a relationship between moles and liters of the substance. Well, that by definition is molarity. So if you know the molarity of something, you know the moles per one liter. So I can take my point. 500 zero, zero per one liter. Now, I like this way better for two reasons. One, it's a new method of getting ourselves to moles so that we can continue and do a stoichiometry problem with it. And two, 
You don't have to memorize what your units are to see how they cancel. You're looking right at it and you see the leaders cancel. The math problem ends up being the same, 0.8 times 0.5. So we end up with the same answer, 0.40 moles of HCl. You'll always be able to solve the problem in the manner that you feel the most comfortable with. Both of these are perfectly legitimate ways to find moles of a substance. Just so you know though, if you decide to do it this way, it will benefit you later on when we start to do mole to mole ratio problems where we start to change identities of things. So those are both molarity type questions. Right? And molarity type questions is one of the three ways to find concentration. The second type of problem is a molality problem, M-O-L-A-L-I-T-Y. These are very similar in how they are found. There is just a different equation for molality. Okay, molality is a lowercase m instead of a capital M. And molality stands for, again, moles of solute, but this time, instead of liters of solution, it is kilograms of solvent. And so different equation, but we can do the same types of things. So when I see an example like the one that's in the overhead section, it says a solution was prepared by dissolving 17.1 grams of sucrose, which is sugar, C12, H22, O11 in 125 grams of water. Determine the molal concentration of this solution. And so when it says a problem like this, we still attack it the same way we always do. List what we know, list what we're trying to find. So I see that I have 17.1 grams of sucrose. C12, H22, O11. I also see that I have 125 grams of water. The question says, find the molal concentration of the solution. So I'm looking for lowercase m. So I will pivot right to the molality equation, right, which says little m is equal to moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. This time I'm going to label who is my solvent and solute so that we can do this. Remember, the solute is the thing that gets dissolved. The solvent is the thing that does the dissolve. So we have sucrose and we have water. Water is known as the universal solvent. So that's one way you would know it's the solvent. Another way that you would know is sugar dissolves in water. That would tell me that the sucrose is the solute. The third way you can tell is the solvent is almost always in greater amount. So we have 17.1 of the sugar, 125 of the water. All of those make me conclude that the solute is sucrose and the solvent is water. That means I need moles of sucrose for the top and kilograms of water for the bottom. So let's think about how from these things we can get those information. So if I start with what I know about sucrose, I know I've got 17.1 grams of C12, H22, O11. Just like we did in the last problem, we know how to change that into moles. We do a bracket problem. We put grams, C12, H22, O11 on the bottom, moles, C12, H22, O11 on the top. If we add those all up off the table, looks like it'll be 12 times 12.01 plus 22 times 1.008 plus 11 times 16. That gets us a number of 342.30.
If we do the math on this now, grams cancels, leaving me with moles of sucrose. And 17.1 divided by 342.30 gets us a value of 0 0.0500 with three sig figs. So there are my moles of sucrose that I need for the job. 0 0.0500 mole sucrose. Right, now I need to get myself kilograms of water for the bottle. So what do I know about H2O? I know I've got 125 grams of H2O. To convert grams into kilograms, it's easy. Grams on the bottom, kilograms on top, that is a 1 to 1,000 ratio. For that, all you have to do is move the decimal 3 to the left, so you get point. 125 kilograms. That gets plugged in up here. Last but not least, we do a little bit of math. 0 0.0500 divided by 0.125 gets us a value of 0.400 little f. Second question says, A solution of iodine, I2, in carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, is used when iodine is needed for certain chemical tests. How much iodine must be added to prepare 0 .480, lowercase m, solution of iodine in CCL4 if 100 grams of CCL4 is used and the 100 is 100.0? Again, we'll list what we know, we list what we try to find. Up here I see that we have a 0 .480 lowercase m solution and that we have 100.0 grams CCL4. The question says how much iodine must be added and how much means grams of I2. Again, we figure out the type of problem. Lowercase m means this is a molality problem. So if we jump to the molality equation, it becomes important to know who is the solute, who is the solvent. This one is a little trickier. There is no water, so we can't use our universal solvent technique to decide who is the solvent. The key phrase here is it says iodine is in carbon tetrachloride. Whatever it says the substance is in must be the solvent. So the solvent is the CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. Therefore, I2 is the solvent. Now we can list our molality equation. M is equal to moles I2 per kilogram CCL4. We think about what of these we were given. Was I given moles of I2? I was not. Was I given little m? Yes, I was. Little m is 0 0.480. Was I given kilograms of CCL4? I was not, but I was given grams. So easy enough to convert grams of CCL4 to kilograms, just like we did in the last problem. 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Move the decimal three to the left. That makes this number 0 0.1000 kilograms. Which means we must be trying to find the moles of I2 to get it to grams. So if I'm going to get X by itself in this problem, it looks like I want to multiply by 0 0.100 on both sides. That means that I'll get x is equal to 0 0.480 moles I2 per kilogram times 0 0.1000 kilograms. Kilograms cancels, 
and I will get that I have 0 0.0480 mole I2. I didn't want moles of I2, I needed grams of I2. So we have to go one more step and convert moles of I2 by putting it on the bottom to grams I2 on the top using the periodic table. One always goes with mole. Iodine off the periodic table is 126.9 times 2. Looks like we put 253 on the top. Zero. 0.80. And when you put that into your calculator, right, you get three sig figs, you end up getting 12.2 grams of I. So I hope this helped you out with your molarity, molality issues. The third way of measuring concentration is percent by mass, which I will put in a different tutorial. If you're having questions, please feel free to stop in and ask.